Well, Peter, good to see you in the paddock again. Um, last time we saw you and spoke to you, you were sporting director of USF1. Now you've got sort of seven, eight months perspective on it. Just sort of give, it a, give us a view about what happened uh, with USF1. Well, uh, I think it was all a question of time. We were ready to go in effect in the sense that we had our backer, we knew what we were going to do, we felt we had everything in place in March 09. And if you look back at 09, it was obviously a year of economic recession, but putting that to one side, because everybody had to face that, it was also a year of, of imploding in Formula One. We had FOTA, the FIA, FOM, the, the uh, commercial rights holder, all in dispute. And that kind of came to a head at the British Grand Prix in July 09. Until that point, we were unable to do anything because we weren't entered in a championship. We couldn't exist as an entity at all. We were then confirmed as, a, as an entered team in July after that when uh, the FIA announced their teams. But that was when there were still two championships. The two championships only came together at the end of August, beginning of September. And that's effectively when we pressed go. And you correctly say with eight months reflection on things. I think at that moment, if we had gone to perhaps Lola, a team like that, a, a company that was building cars, that was in existence, I think we'd be okay. But the premise of our team and the foundation of our team, the American team, was A, to be a national team and B, to do our car in America, to be the first people to do that really since the very early 60s. And I think if we'd had a year, we could have done it. But I think in the time we had, it was a big ask to do a factory alone in America, let alone to design and build a car and put a team of people together. And we were still hiring people November, December from existing F1 teams. Uh, but by that time, you're running really late. I mean, the crash test deadlines were deadlines that, if you look back 10 years ago, Jackie Stewart didn't have to face when he did his new team. And those things just come at you. And if you don't make the date, you know, you can go to Bahrain with a fudged up car, but if, if it's not FIA compliant, you can't do it. Yeah, and we, we had a, we, we lost two or three weeks doing a fuel tank the correct size because Cosworth revised their figures. You know, lots of things we perhaps shouldn't have done because we know other teams didn't spend time doing that. It was a question of time, you know. If you speak to anybody in Formula One about how long it takes to do a car for next year, an existing team, they're all two thirds of the way through their 2011 car already. We didn't start our 2010 car until too late in retrospect, but we didn't know it at the time. I mean, also in retrospect, I mean, for example, Lotus, knew that there was this disconnect between which championship was which, but they took a punt anyway and they started designing stuff not knowing. You couldn't have done that? Well, we could have, but I don't think that was that. I mean, we, we, were, you know, we were sure we'd be racing, but, but perhaps we should have done what Lotus did. I mean, they ran, they designed that car effectively in a, in a ready-to-go operation that Mike Gascoigne had set up in Germany, an offshoot, I guess, to everything he'd done with Toyota. He, those people had worked together. It was a, a very slick operation, and they just got the car built. We were kind of a year behind where Mike Gascoigne was even then, because we had to put our guys together and create our, if you like, our little Germany in, in Charlotte, North Carolina. And whilst doing it in America per se was not an issue, the fact that we had to do it from September onwards, rather than during the course of the year, was, was the killer for us. And talking of Toyota, um, some talk of buying the 2010 Toyota? Well, yeah, I mean, there was talk of what we thought there was talk of was doing an engine deal, which was really interesting for us. Uh, it would have meant uh, a complicated situation with Cosworth. But um, the chassis was part of it. it. It was either the whole car or nothing at all. And it wasn't my call. It was Ken Anderson's call. And he said it would kill our team if we didn't race our own car, if we didn't do our own car he would rather go down doing our own car than racing another car and yeah in retrospect I don't agree with that I didn't agree with it at the time but it wasn't my position to do anything about it because it was his project in that sense. I remember at the time you and Ken asked the FIA you said look just let, let us miss some races maybe the first few flyaways come to Europe or or halfway through the season if the FIA had been a bit flexible on that firstly do you think they should have been and secondly do you think you'd be on the grid now? Um, that's a very good question and uh, I don't know the answer to it because it didn't happen. In racing you just push with everything you have. I mean I, 
I think and I hope I gave this project everything that I had. Um, you know, all my passion and love of the sport came out in that project and here I am back again, still with the same passion and love, but I'll do things differently, I guess. I don't know is the answer to that, Ted. I really don't know. Um, if you're given more time, do you continue to make the same mistakes? I suppose that's one question that you have to ask. Equally, um, we did effectively miss that crash test by about three weeks. So if we'd had those three weeks, we'd be racing now and, and it, over a long period and our project was sort of four years in the making we missed out by three weeks in effect so yeah with more time of course it would have made a difference and we see you here what's happened to all the other characters what's happened to Ken Anderson what's happened to Chad Hurley who invested um, you know a, lo a lot of money into the project well I haven't actually seen them since the start of the year but um, I'm sure Chad is very obviously very disappointed and frustrated by what happened he was 100 percent behind us a great guy um it was a very very difficult indoctrination to formula one for him i mean imagine what it was like for a guy from silicon valley that had no concept of formula one to come into this mayhem of 2009 go to the british grand prix and see all these factions meeting in motorhomes that was his introduction to formula one and then everything that happened after that obviously he was he had more to lose than anybody. Um, equally, um, we were all broken by it. Um, I think everybody learns from these things. In my case, I can only really speak for myself. Ken's in America still, um, I'm sure. In my case, I love this sport, you know, and I've spent four or five months thinking about uh, the last 30 years I've been lucky enough to have in Formula One and what the future is. And I think there's still a lot of potential in a lot of areas, not necessarily new teams but in a lot of areas and I'm really excited about those and it's fantastic to be here at Singapore. I mean, you, me, we all love this and this is what it's all about. And for a final thought on F1 in America, you know, it's the last great untapped market. We're just getting into India, we've got a Russian driver in the sport. Is it ever going to happen? I mean, whether it's a, a, you know, a lovely idea of a team, uh, this Austin race that may happen, may not, we don't know. Is it ever going to happen? Well, the Austin race, um, completely out of my hands, your hands, everybody's hands. We all know whose hands that, that's in. Let's hope it happens. Um, we need a race in America. We need two or three races in America. I don't think there'll be an American team for a while. Um, I think when we conceived our team, it was exactly the right moment. And I think, we, I think the premise was exactly right. Don't forget, it was long before other teams were invited to bid for those two grid spaces. It was long before the budget cap was talked about. It was long before Cosworth had come back in doing those deals. When we did our team, I think it was right. I think it would be wrong to do a new team now. I think many things have changed. And Nicola Todd spoke for everybody, the head of ART, saying it's not the right time to do a new team. It costs 75, 80 million euros. And he's the son of the president of the FIA. So if that's what he thinks. He's pretty right, I'm sure. Um, as for America, I think the future is the drivers. And I think the new crop of American drivers racing well now at various levels is incredibly encouraging. And it looks as if the timing's perfect for Austin. You've got Alexander Rossi, you've got Connor Daly, you've got great guys racing in America. Um, and I think that's the future now. And let's focus on American drivers and giving them a chance and, and letting them represent their country. They've got all the talent there. Uh, they just need the opportunity now to race with decent teams.